Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are adding and subtracting rational numbers with no number lines involved. Let's do it. First off, I'm going to show you how to set it up and then how to solve. That's pretty much all there is to this. Let's go and look at the setup. The first thing I would do with setup is to make the expression as simple as possible. This requires that you look at all the different rules we've talked about up to this point. If it's written as a negative minus a, a positive, I would personally rewrite that as adding two negatives, negative five plus negative six. If you have a negative plus a positive like this, you can rearrange them using the commutative property to make it into 74 minus 15. Or the most common one that you'll see on tests, but pretty much nowhere else, is 14 minus negative three, changing that into a positive. Anything minus a negative becomes a positive. So you set up every question as easy as it can be, and then you solve it. Let's look at uh, the rules again for solving it. If you do have two negatives, negative five plus negative six, then you keep the sign and add the numbers. If the signs are the same, find the sum. If the signs are different, you subtract or find the difference. So in this case, negative eight plus six, I would subtract eight minus six. Then I would keep the sign from the larger, and I put larger in quotation marks, it's the larger absolute value. Or in other words, ask yourself, which is there more of? There are eight negatives and six positives. There are more negatives than positives, so your final answer will be negative. And I don't mean to be so negative, both answers on this slide. But you will see a lot of questions with negatives, so I wanna prepare you for that. Now let's get into decimals. Whenever you have a question, we are going to simplify it, set it up, and solve it. Look at this question, for example, negative 6.2 minus negative 13.3. Whenever you have that minus negative, we immediately change it. What's that gonna look like? I can't hear your answer. This is a recording. Let's try that again. We change that minus negative into a plus. So this is 16.2 negative 6.2 plus 13.3. We could also change this into being 13.3 minus 6.2, right? Because that's using the commutative property and we just change the, the position of those two numbers and when we move them, we have to move the sign with it. So there we go. 13.3 uh, minus 6.2. Whenever you're adding or subtracting with decimals, and you're going to see this, I like to write them vertically, and you always line up the decimal. You don't line up the final number. Line up the decimal, and then I'll show you what to do if we have decimals that are different number of digits. But with this one, it's pretty straightforward. 13.3 minus 6.2, you get 7.1. You probably had that answer while I was rambling and you are ready to move along. So let's move along. Here's a practice question for you. What I'd like you to do is to take this question, write it in the most simple way possible that you feel you can write it, set it up, lining up the decimals and solve. Three, two, one, go for it. Are you back? Did you do it? If not, you can pause and I'll be quiet, inevitably. All right, let's set this up. The way I solve these types of questions is I like to set it up as an addition question. 9.3 plus 12.9, both of them are negatives. When we have two numbers that are both negative, you add them up and keep the sign. So I'll just add them. Notice when I'm adding, I line up the decimals directly above each other. And then I'll add three and nine is 12, carry the one, nine and two is 11, plus one is 12, plus one more, 22.2. And that's how we would solve this one. Line up the decimals and add, but there's something missing. It has to be a negative, right? When we're adding a negative 9.3 plus negative 12.9, we add them and we keep the sign. So it's 22.2, but it's going to be negative. All right, here's another practice for you. 17.6 minus 64.3. Try that one out. When I'm doing this question, I would rewrite it as adding a negative. Again, it's just 
you can leave it the way it was and that's fine. But adding a negative just reminds me the, of the rules a little bit better. So you can choose to write it this way or not. It's kind of up to your preference. But when I see those two as an addition question, I know there's different signs. It's a positive 17.6 and a negative 64.3. Different signs, so I find the difference. So I'm going to be subtracting. When you subtract, you put the larger absolute value first, or in other words, whichever number is bigger when you ignore the signs. So 64.3 will go first, and then I'm going to subtract 17.6, line them up, subtract, and I get 46.7. Then I take the sign from the larger absolute value. So again, I'm asking myself, are there more positives or negatives here? There were 17.6 positives. There were 64 negatives. So my final answer is definitely going to be negative. We have to remember that last step. All right, let's do one more. This one will help show what happens when we have a different number of digits on the right of the decimal. I rewrite this as a negative plus a negative because that's just easier. They are the same sign, so I'm going to find the sum and keep the sign. In other words, I add these numbers. Notice I lined up the decimal. Now, what do we do with this? I have 74.2 plus 10.002. I'm going to make them all have the same number of digits, and to do that, I add in some zeros there on the end. Adding zeros on the end of a number after the decimal does not change the value. So that is the same value, 72.4 or 74.2 versus 74.200. Now I can add them straight down 0 plus 2, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 2 plus 0, 4 plus 0, and 7 plus 1. That will give me 84 and 202 thousandths. This number will be negative because it's a negative plus a negative. When you add two negatives, you get an even more negative negative. All right, another practice. This one has that minus negative that should be quick and easy, something that you immediately replace with something else. Try that one out, go for it. All right. Negative 3.43 minus negative 5.06. I would change that to negative 3.43 plus 5.06. Now you could take this one step further using the commutative property and actually make it 5.06 minus 3.4. And that's what we're going to do over here. 5.06 minus 3.43. And we subtract. Notice I also lined up those decimals, like I've been saying before. Forgot to mention that. But there we go. We get 1.63. Now, we're going to look at it and say, are there more negatives or positives? Because that's going to tell us whether our final answer is a positive 1.63 or a negative 1.63. We have 5.06 positives and 3.43 negatives. Five positives, three negatives. We have more positives than negatives, so our final answer will remain positive. That's our final answer, 1.63, or 1 and 63 hundredths. A couple things to keep in mind. Make the question as simple as possible. You might have rearranged in a different way than I did, and that's okay. Remember all the rules, and then you'll be able to simplify it however you want. I hope that was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.